Making the Timberwolves look bad. Jimmy Butler, who I like, looks bad. Thibodeau, who I like, looks bad. The guy who owns the team, I don't know him. He looks bad. Me, he looks like he's five pounds overweight, but I'm, I haven't seen him on the scale. With the, the hair, he feeling a little sleeker? Uh, maybe, maybe. Shout out to my man Tommy Heisen, though. Real talk, he got me in shape. When Moses told me I was fat and lazy and got me in shape in Philly, I didn't take it as hating on me. It was like that in our day, Ernie, but now, anytime you tell a young kid something, oh, you hater, you the old get off my lawn guy, it drives me crazy. Donovan not on the floor tonight. What remains the same on the court with the principles and the way you guys play and what will be different? It'll be a hell of a lot more shots for some people, I know that. <laughs> Say what? That's what's buzzing around the NBA. Say who's still with us. And the always fashionable, very fresh, NBA champion Antonio Daniels joining us from the studio in Dallas tonight, getting ready for the Thunder and Wizards. He'll be on the pregame show. AD, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Jared. All right, so the Oklahoma City Thunder, after an 0-4 start, have won three in a row. I've noticed Russell Westbrook has been recognizing mismatches. He's been distributing the ball to his big man, Stephen Adams. What's going on? Are things going to trend this way the rest of the year? Well, I mean, you would hope so, but what you really recognize with Russell Westbrook these last three games is he's finally got his legs under him and found some sort of rhythm because in the first two games, he struggled. You know, he's averaging 22 points, nine rebounds, eight assists, which sounds fantastic, but he shot 42% for the field. And now in these last three games, he's putting up about 28, eight and seven, but he's shooting 53% from the field and averaging close to three and a half steals. So what you really see in Russell Westbrook these last three games is now it's taking a little bit of time, but now he's got his legs and his rhythm with him. Yeah, and Russ is a guy I wasn't worried about, believe it or not. I was assuming he would need a few games to get comfortable. I love, though, the ridiculous immediate reaction. You know, one game in and there, people are writing him off and talking about how he's not playing the right way. Give him a few weeks. Give him some time to get comfortable, get his body right, right and get into a rhythm playing with these guys that he knows well. All right, well, if you thought we were overreacting after one game, <laughs> go ahead, A.D. <laughs> Well, I mean, the thing is, in this league, when you are hurt, especially when it's a lower, um, a lower body injury, you can't really, you can't do cardio things because you can't really get yourself back in rhythm. And the one thing you can't do, you cannot simulate games. You can get on the treadmill, you can run, you can do so many other things. But when it actually comes down to games, the only way that you're going to find the rhythm that you need to find, especially if you're a guy like Russell Westbrook that gets up and down the floor with that type of explosiveness, the only way to find that rhythm is to actually get out there and play yourself back into shape and play yourself back into rhythm. And well, he's you, done that these past three games. If you guys thought there was an overreaction to one game of <laughs> Russell Westbrook, wait until a couple hours from now after Dwight Howard plays his first game for the Washington <laughs> Wizards who are struggling mightily. Think who is Dwight Howard the savior that the war that the Wizards have been looking for? Well, I think as big and strong as Dwight Howard is, um, they need a supersized savior. And it's probably something you need a prescription for. Dwight is none of the <laughs> above. And, and look, Dwight has been a productive player. He's continued to be a walking double-double throughout his career. But he's not the savior that you would wish he would be at this stage of his career. It's just not going to happen. Dwight has not been able to affect that kind of change in any of his recent stops, I don't expect it to happen with the Wizards. AD? I think, I, I think he may be the temporary savior because when you're a team that is struggling, like you said, the Washington Wizards are one in six right now. Anything helps right now, <laughs> even a Dwight Howard. And the fact of the matter is, we can talk about Dwight Howard and all his antics off the floor. Dwight Howard's the first ballot Hall of Famer. Any way you break it down by the numbers, any way you look at it. And sometimes what you need in that locker room is something fresh, something new. And Dwight Howard can bring that with his size, with his strength, and with his athleticism. So the, you can respond two ways to Dwight Howard coming back. You know, you can have a negative response or you can have a positive response and feed off the energy of having that type of size, strength, and athleticism that you have yet to have for the first six games of the year. All right, let's move on to the Houston Rockets here. AD, want your take on this. I know you still look at them pretty closely. Um, James Harden's going to miss tonight's game as well. They're moving Carmelo Anthony back to the bench. Is, is there going to be Daryl Morey need to make a physical change with this roster, or can they find the answer within? Man, you, you know, when we talk about the Houston Rockets and what Trevor Ariza and Luke Bamute meant to this team defensively, People say we're giving too much credit to those guys. 
what those two guys brought was a defensive mentality that the Houston Rockets don't have right now. You have Chris Paul that wants to defend. You have P.J. Tucker that wants to defend. And you have Clint Capella that wants to defend. What you had in Luke Bamute and Trevor Ariza were two guys with a defensive mind frame with the versatility to switch so many different and guard different positions and then knock down three-point shots. They don't have that right now. James Ennis is not Trevor Ariza. Carmelo Anthony is not Trevor Ariza. And I'm not saying that in, a, in discrediting either because Carmelo Anthony is a first ballot Hall of Famer. But with the Houston Rockets, what you need to play off of James Harden and Chris Paul is guys that want to defend and guys that are willing and able to knock down open jump shots. I think your biggest issue for the Rockets is that you tweaked something that didn't need tweaking. You allowed right. yourself to change your DNA when it was completely unnecessary. They got to within minutes of playing in the finals last year with a hurt Chris Paul on the sideline, you know, out in game five with that hamstring injury. Western Conference Finals on your home floor, you had two chances. Two chances for somebody to step up and play the hero and you couldn't find it. But to go into the offseason and to subtract two guys who fit as well as Trevor Ariza and Luke Mbamute, to me, was the, a fatal mistake for this team. Now you're Houston and you're trying to find that same synergy you had last year yeah. with completely different pieces. If I'm Daryl Morey, I'm on the phone. I'm talking to somebody trying to figure out is there an outside remedy I can bring in to fix this team. You know, the one he might be able to look for is calling Jeff Bezdelic <laughs> and say, how much you want to come back to the bench, Jeff? <laughs> be our defensive coordinator again. Antonio Daniels, thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you on the Fox Sports Oklahoma broadcast tonight. I appreciate you guys for having me. The champ is here, Antonio <laughs> Daniels. We're back with Taku Smith. And hey, how about this? The highest scoring game in NBA history was there more threes taken in that game than the lowest scoring game this year? Well, Aaron Gordon shoots threes. He's taking on the Clippers tonight, all part of a big Friday Night Orlando Association.